So the prosperity package of God is available unto everybody. But listen, it is available to everybody, but it's not accessible to everybody. Not everybody will walk in it. It's only accessible to those who are careful enough to diligently find out God's program. Not Nigeria's program. Not America's program. Not the 21st century program. Thank God for all of the education and the packages and all of this. But let me tell you the truth. The word of God stands forever. And there is nothing that can be done against the truth. But for the truth. Are you getting blessed tonight? Praise God. What is prosperity? I want to shock you tonight. Let me tell you what prosperity is not. Having your needs met is not prosperity. It's called welfare. Are you listening to me? Having your needs met is not what the Bible calls prosperity. We are beginning to balance the gospel of prosperity now. Because for many believers, our, the circumference of our concept of prosperity is that I come to a point where I have a job or I have whatever and I have enough for myself, my wife and my children. Having, meeting the ability to meet your need is not called prosperity. It's called welfare. You are faring well if your needs are met. You can afford the fees of your children you have. You are not lacking something to eat. The biblical definition of prosperity is given in scripture. Genesis 12. Don't open there. Genesis 12 verse 2. When you read Genesis 12 verse 1 and 2, the God called Abraham out. And he said, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. He said, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So, prosperity is not having money to feed yourself, to feed your family, give your mother some, give your father some. That's not prosperity. That's welfare. Many prosperity preachers are still in the realm of welfare. Are you listening to me? And what many believers call the prosperity package of God is just welfare. They have not even entered what the Bible defines as prosperity. Prosperity is being so blessed. So blessed that you become a blessing to others. You must, in God's prosperity package, you must become a blessing to others. By virtue of what God has done in your life. I can tell you the truth. There are many rich people, but there are no prosperous people. Very few prosperous people, according to God's standards. So prosperity is being blessed to be a blessing. Being blessed to be a blessing. The second thing I want you to know about prosperity is that prosperity is not limited to financial resources. I cannot tell you this enough. Prosperity, biblical prosperity is not limited to financial blessings alone. This is where a lot of people get it wrong. Because many prosperity messages camp around finances. And they stop there. The Bible says in Genesis 24 verse 1, the Bible says, And Abraham was old and stricken in age. It says, And God had blessed him in all things. All things. Say after me, all things. So, prosperity is, is your, your excelling in every area of life. Spiritually, financially, hallelujah, in your family, when all around you is well with you. The Bible says God gave the, uh, the, the, um, Solomon, was it Solomon or David, rest round about. Prosperity is not just limited to finance. Are you listening to me? So, I, I, I need us to have a switch in mindset so that you, when we talk about prosperity... You don't just limit it. The word prosperity means to prosper. To prosper means to advance. To move forward. To excel. To lead. Hallelujah. 
This is the concept of prosperity that has not been understood in the church. Because everybody just says, ah, all they are claiming it and jumping and receiving it, everything is just around themselves. The man of God and himself or the church members and them and their ministry. That's not prosperity. That's welfare. And that is no different from what the world is doing. Hallelujah. Say, I'm prosperous. Say it, I'm prosperous. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I'll be sharing with you powerful principles. Obedience, number one. Obedience is the gateway to a life of true prosperity. Obedience. Don't trivialize what I'm sharing. Don't trivialize it at all. Many of you will rejoice on the strength of this revelation many years to come. Obedience is the gateway. Obedience is the gateway to a world of wealth, prosperity, finance. Job 36 verse 11. Job 36 verse 11. Thank you Jesus. Job before Psalms. Job 36 verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. This is God's word. If. If. That means you have a choice. He said, if they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. This is the immutable counsel of God. And I began by telling you, you cannot do anything against the truth, but for the truth. If ye obey and serve him. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man who feared the Lord. Who delighted greatly in his commandments. Verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. This is where we get the concept of generational blessing. The Bible says the generation of the upright. You see true prosperity. True prosperity moves beyond you. Are you listening to me? True prosperity moves beyond you. It says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3 if you are there. One to read. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endureth forever. This is to those who delight in obeying the commands of God. He said, first his seed shall be mighty. So when you talk about Copeland, you hear the name Copeland, there is a generational blessing. His seed shall be mighty. Hallelujah. He says, the generation of the upright will be blessed. What our forefathers transferred to us in Nigeria are all kinds of causes and all kinds of satanic things. We woke up to meet a heritage of woes in Nigeria. And if we don't do something about it, we'll pass it to our generation. But God forbid in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It said, wealth and riches shall be in his house. I love that scripture. Obedience. Obedience. Obedience to the principles of God is what will guarantee. I, I tell you the truth. Listen to me. Please listen to me. These are irrefutable principles. They will never be broken according to the integrity of God. Listen. The Bible says God searched for a man who was greater than to swear by. And finding no man, God swore by himself. That by these two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. He said, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the word that proceeds from my mouth. God can be trusted. It is on account of his integrity that we can have the confidence to obey his principles. Say amen. amen. So obedience. There are many people who talk prosperity. Who jump and claim prosperity but are not ready to bear the responsibility of obedience. Let me tell you something. If you like, go to Oxford, Harvard, go to um, 
Whatever you want to go, if you do not obey the principles of God, you will never get prosperity God's way. Hallelujah. You believe that? You cannot do anything against the truth. Obedience. Say after me, obedience. Obedience. When I began to search for this thing, I started saying, Lord, you must open my eyes to the revelation of your word. There's something that I need to know. I don't want to give my generation a heritage of, of of, of poverty and weakness because it does not glorify God. Let me tell you straight to the point. God is not glorified in your poverty. Write it and never forget it. Nobody will preach me into believing that God is glorified in any man's poverty. You can accomplish more for the kingdom if you are blessed. Hallelujah. There is a world dying out there and you can never help the poor by being one of them. More families have been broken as a result of financial issues than the manifestation of demons and evil spirits. There are many, many children who cannot afford to go to school. There are many families that cannot afford a meal. You are not going to just talk and pamper them. It will take the manifestation of kingdom wealth and prosperity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so I began to study this subject of prosperity. To find out what the Bible really teaches about this truth. Because there are all kinds of teachings. And now I've listened to different versions and varieties of the prosperity message. Hallelujah. And I found an interesting scripture. And this is where our journey will start tonight. Hallelujah. Isaiah 51. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is changing somebody this night forever. Forever. And I mean it from the depths of my heart. Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51. Are you there? Verse 2. It says, Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. It says, Look unto Abraham. So, God is saying, My portrait, my definition of what I call a prosperous person, is Abraham. It says, Look unto Abraham thy father, and unto Sarah, your mother. He said, I called him alone. I blessed him, and I increased him. So tonight, we'll look unto Abraham. Abraham is the biblical portrait of God's idea of a blessed man. Are you listening to me? Not the rich people that you have read their books. Thank God for all of them. But let me tell you something. God's idea, his portrait of a blessed man, is in the person of Abraham. Isaiah 51 verse 2. I was shocked when I found this scripture. It said, look, there are only two people in the Bible as far as I know that the Bible says we should look up to. One is Abraham. Second, it said, looking up to Jesus. So it said, look up to Abraham. There is a message in the life of Abraham that, is, that needs to be gotten by the body of Christ. Look unto Abraham. He said, I called him alone. Look unto Abraham, your father. He says, and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and I blessed him and I increased him. We sing a lot of songs. Abraham's blessings are mine. And when Jesus began to talk to the Jews, because they claimed they knew Abraham and that the lineage of the Jewish nation started from Abraham. Let me show you something. John 8, quickly. John 8. Listen to an interesting statement that Jesus made to them. John 8, 39. The Jewish people were angry 
because they claim that they were free. Are you there, verse 39? And they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If you were Abraham's children, what would happen? You would do the works of Abraham. Are you following me now? This is Jesus talking to the Jews. He's saying you people always claim Abraham is your father. But you are not doing what Abraham did. And in Isaiah 51, he said, Look unto Abraham. There is something Abraham did that made me to present him as the portrait. Of the man that God has blessed. Look unto Abraham. So the foundation of true biblical prosperity. Is when you begin to study this man called Abraham. There are certain steps that Abraham took. There are certain things that he did. Are you following me now? And that if any believer. I don't care who you are. I don't care what's your level of education. Listen, prosperity is not about business alone. It's not about job. All of those things come later. The foundation of prosperity is a proper understanding of God's word. I wish the graduates in Nigeria knew this truth. Are you listening to me? Biblical prosperity is not just opening a shop and let go. No, 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 no. Just keep all those things first. There is an understanding. There is a foundation. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, that body, for I called him alone, and I blessed him, and I increased him. So let's examine the life of Abraham. Unfortunately, when many people begin to teach on the biblical prosperity message, they don't even talk about Abraham. They begin to talk about themselves and their shoes and their suit and so on and so forth. The Bible says, look unto Abraham. So what can we find in the life of Abraham? Number one, the principle of tithing. Abraham was a tither. Genesis 14. Please write it. Irrefutable truths and foundations that can turn any man. I don't care what the disadvantage is. If God be God, his word is true and you can stake him at his word. Number one is the principle of tithing. The Bible says in Genesis 14, there's no time for us to, to go there. The Bible says how that when Abraham went to war to go and bring back his, 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 his brother Lot and all his goods and everything. The Bible says they spoiled the enemies that they went for war against. And the Bible says when Abraham came, he met a man called Melchizedek. And the Bible says Melchizedek was the priest of the Most High. And Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And the Bible says Abraham gave him a tithe of his spoils. Look unto Abraham your father. I'm giving you, see, God's prosperity package, let me tell you the truth, is not a mystery. I'm demystifying it for you tonight. It's not a mystery. Just like you go to school and you can know that you know some things, you can get these principles. Say amen. Look unto your father Abraham. The first thing we see in the life of Abraham is that Abraham was a tither. Abraham was a tither. So number one principle is tithing. Write your tithing. What is your tithe? A tithe is the tenth portion of your income. A tenth portion of your increase. Proverbs 3 verse 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. Verse 10. So shall thy bands be full and thy vats to overflowing. The principle of tithing. Now many believers have been taught different concepts about tithing. Let me tell you something, friends. 
if you do not tithe, you are scripturally entitled to a life of poverty. Scripturally. If you do not, I don't care what else you do. I don't care whether you work in the presidency. I assure you, your prosperity will not last. Say after me, tithing. Tithing is the key that opens the heavens. That key that opens up the heavens. And is the foundation for lasting abundance. Leviticus 27 verse 30. We are looking up to Abraham. Leviticus. I really want to finish this. Because the Lord is answering somebody's prayer point tonight. Prosperity is not just the issue of prayer and say, Lord, bring money. Tonight you will see that you will pray that prayer forever and you will not get an answer. Hallelujah. Mm. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Are you there? And all the tithe of the land, whether of seed, whether of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. It is holy unto God. All the tithes. Say all. all. Not some. All the tithe of the land belongs to God. Your tithe is 10%. The Bible says it is holy. It's an instruction. It's an admonition. It's part of God's economic system. That for every true believer and everyone that cares to receive the package of God's blessings, your tithe is the number one. There are many believers who do not tithe. I know many prayer warriors who are poor and they are broke. I know many people who are full of revelations. I know all kinds of people. Let me tell you something, friends. Your tithe opens the heavens. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12. He says, will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? That's the question. Will a man rob God? And there are many robbers of God in the church. Many pastors, members, sincere people, but robbers of God. He said, will a man rob God? He said, yet ye have robbed me. And he said, wherein have we robbed you? He said, in tithes and offerings. Listen, he said, you are cursed. Can I tell you something? This is not the cause of the law. Hello? This is not the cause of the law. This is the cause that comes as a direct result. The word cause there means woe. I tell you sincerely, if you, if you are not a faithful titer, the hardship of your life have not started yet. Show me a man who has all the blessings in the world and is not a faithful titer. I don't envy his blessings. Hallelujah. The recession brought a lot of arrogant economic theories to their knees and proved that only they that stand with the Lord will last forever. Do you believe that? Till tomorrow we are still speaking about Abraham. Listen, Israel, the biological son of Abraham, has become a nation today, the nation Israel. The nation Israel is still a prosperous nation today. A nation that is on deserts, they farm on rocks, yet they are exporting food. Are you listening to me? Surrounded by every atmosphere of hostility, but they are still standing strong. As a Jewish nation, dispersed for many years, and they came back together and they still understood their language. The best students in Harvard today are Jewish students. The very best. The best of business owners in America today are Jewish people. Because he says, Blessed is the man that fears God. His seed shall be mighty. Are you listening to me? Today people troop to Israel again and again to go for pilgrimage. But he said, if you claim Abraham is your father, then do what Abraham did. Otherwise you are a hypocrite. Are you following me now? So, number one principle is what? Tithing. 
The Bible says in verse 10, bring ye all the tithes. Say after me, all the tithes. Bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be meat in my house. He said, and prove me, test me. Commit my integrity, said the Lord. If I will not open the windows of heaven and shower upon you a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. He said, you will be called blessed and you will be a delightsome land. Seven prophetic blessings that follow Titus. I called Abraham alone, naive, taught him certain principles and I produced a wonder, a portrait of a prosperous man. Say after me, I receive grace to tithe. Listen. Tithing. Tithing is the foundation of your prosperity. Are you listening to me? Many people give all kinds of excuses. Ah, my parents gave their tithe in their salary. Oh, our pastor said this and that. Any man that teaches you not to tithe, even if he loves you, is wrecking your financial destiny. I say it again and I will repeat it. Any man, I don't care who, who teaches you that you should not tithe and just says one day things will work for you, except this scripture can be broken. And the Bible says you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Any man who is not a faithful tither is doomed to fail in his finances. Prosperity will be far from you, I assure you. Did you know that even secular people who are not born again practice the principle of tithing? They may not call it tithing, but 10% of many corporations today that are some of the leading corporations, 10% and even more are given. They ignite this principle. Look unto Abraham. Say, I receive grace to be a tither. See, tonight there are many of you that it is, there is no devil stopping you from your prosperity. It's your greed. And Satan keeps deceiving you and makes you think if you give or if you give your tithe, how much do you have? And you say, one day when I start working. The problem is this. It is your tithing that brings you into blessings. Hallelujah. Abraham gave a tithe. Number two, Abraham was a sacrificial giver. Your giving. Your giving. Abraham was a giver. Genesis 18 verse 1 to 8. Write it, we don't have time to read it. But the Bible makes us to understand that Abraham was just sitting down and taking fresh air outside. Suddenly he saw three people coming. He didn't even bother to find out whether they came to kill him or not. The Bible says he ran to meet them. And he told them, he said, you are welcome. You are welcome to my house. Come and sit down. He, he said they gave them water to wash their feet. He ran immediately and went and caught a lamb. He told his wife, get flour. Prepare food for these people. And the Bible says, a liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that waters shall himself be watered. Proverbs 11 verse 24 and 25. A liberal soul shall be made fat. There are many greedy and stingy people in the church. And they will never, ever, never break that barrier of poverty. Be educated, get PhD, get masters, go to Harvard, go. If you are not a giver, forget about prosperity. Are you getting blessed tonight? Your giving is tied to the principle of sowing and reaping. Genesis 8.22 The Bible says, As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, summer and winter, cold and heat, day and night shall not cease, as long as the earth remains. That means this principle is in motion. If you do not sow anything, brothers and sisters, let me tell you the sincere truth, you will not receive anything. Agriculture teaches us that, correct? Luke 6, 38. Give, 
and it shall be given unto you. Give and it shall be given unto you. Don't give and it shall not be given unto you. Period and full stop. Don't give and it shall not be given unto you. The Bible says good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. He said for with the same measure you give, don't let anybody deceive you that the size of your seed does not matter. Agriculture teaches us more than that. The Bible says, He that soweth sparingly, 2 Corinthians 9, shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully, shall reap bountifully. The Bible says, Let every man, according as he has purposed in his heart, give cheerfully and not grudgingly for God loves a cheerful giver the next verse says and God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work he said he which gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater that means out of every resource that comes there is bread and there is seed hallelujah if you sow your bread, you are not wise. If you eat your seed, you are not wise. For everything God gives you, there is bread and there is seed. Many people eat everything. Once you get it, it's going to your mouth straight. Whose God is their belly? Are you learning something tonight? Say I'm a giver. Break the shackles of greed in your life. And I'm telling you, you will step. I don't care who you know. Or Paul said, no, we no man after the flesh. This is not an issue of connection. I know this, I know that. that. That's not the issue. For Jeremiah 1 verse 12 says, God is alert and active, watching over his word to perform it. And if God be God, then his word cannot be broken. Irrefutable principles. Your tithing, number two, your giving. Hmm. So we see that Abraham was a giver. Genesis 1, 18 verse 1 to 8. And the Bible says in Proverbs 11 verse 24 and 25, A liberal soul shall be made fat. Hallelujah. I told you according to Genesis 24 verse 1, that prosperity is not just limited to finances. The Bible says God bless Abraham in all things. All things. Hallelujah. Prosperity. This has been our secret as individuals and as a ministry. Listen, I learned this from Bishop David Oedeko some years ago. He shared a powerful principle. He said in 1987, the Lord told him that he has started prospering as a person, but his ministry... Let me tell you something. And this is what preachers miss. Do you know, if I am prosperous as a preacher, alright, and if you are prosperous as a preacher and the members of your ministry are not prosperous, the yoke will kill you. Are you listening to me? There are many preachers who are prosperous, but they are not teaching their members. And so they are dying alone. Praise the Lord. And he said the Lord told him, he said he was meditating and the Lord told him, he said, do you realize that Abraham did not go to battle alone? Correct? He went with some people. So that spoil was not just for him alone. So when he came and he gave the tithe, he gave the tithe on behalf of other people too. I told him that's the secret of corporate growth. Are you listening to me? And from the very first day by the grace of God that Koinonia started, we don't owe God as a ministry one naira in time. This is the secret behind the blessing. It's not a mystery. Are you listening to me? It's not some mystery, some, some magic. No. There are ministries that don't tithe. They don't care. They've been there for 10 years. 20 years, no improvement, no growth. And they give all kinds of lousy excuses. They've tried all kinds of economic theories. The secret is tithing. 
Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Well, whether you believe it or not, one day you will believe it. Certainly. Everybody in hell is a believer. The only issue is that they believe too late. The key to open heavens over a ministry, over any organization, I don't care what it is, tight. Say after me, tight. If you don't, there is no future. There is no future for any financial future, prosperity future, for any ministry or any organization that is not faithful in tithing. And let me tell you, the secret of getting the blessings of tithing is consistency. Write it. Many of you tithe, but you are not consistent. You do it once in a while. One day when there is a spiritual, emotional high, then you get, no. Consistent tithing. Consistent tithing. The Bible says, and if the cloud be full of rain, they will empty themselves. Thank you, Jesus. Giving is the key to increase. Giving is the key to continuous blessings. Shall men give? Shall men give? Not shall angels give your prosperity. I don't believe in what they call wealth creation. There's nothing called wealth creation. I believe in wealth transfer. There's no new money that has fallen from anywhere. It's only been transferred from one geographical location to the other. Shall men give? I hear a lot of people, our, our scripture, we like that scripture. Oh, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Massive wealth transfer is coming. Hold on. Hold on. I've read it too. But let me shock you. Because according to God's wealth transfer plan, some believers are also going to be victims. The Bible says the man with one talent, they collected it from him. He was part of the three. And they gave the man who had five. Oh, we are touching it. Touch it. <laughs> Let me tell you, before you talk it, make sure that all the principles are there. Otherwise, you will talk yourself to frustration. I assure you. I assure you. We've examined the word of faith already. I don't need to go back into it. Are you listening to me? Obedience. Deuteronomy 18 verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to observe and to do all that I command thee this day, that the Lord will set thee above on high, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. It shall come to pass, if you hearken to his voice and you obey, no matter who you are. See, God is not a respecter of men, but is a respecter of his word. The Bible says he exalts his word even above his name. Hallelujah. So your tithing and your giving. Your giving is the same as your sowing. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully. So we see sowing there. He said, every man as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give. So he links sowing to giving and receiving to harvest. And the Bible says, as far as the earth remains, seed time. See, when you see certain people make some statements, it's not because they are, they are talkative. It's because they have taken God by His word. And on account of the integrity of God, they can beat their chest. Paul said, I know whom I have believed. He's not a stranger to me. I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed. I want you to leave here tonight with a depth of persuasion. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for watching this wonderful video by God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman. In case you have been blessed so mightily by the Lord through his word and via his servant, I do like you to strike the subscribe button and to click on the notification bell to stay updated for more of Reflector Hub's TV content videos and do well to share to your loved ones family friends neighbors and also get them blessed see you in the next content god bless you